Azure Architecture, let's talk about it. Over the past year or so, since I've been starting to make actual good videos, or what I think are better videos, I've been getting a lot of people asking about things like Azure Architecture and design, and following good practice, and designing an environment that is ready for an enterprise. So having virtual appliances, and having firewalls, and making sure it's secure. I've had that question actually more than any other question. I just find it a bit hard to sort of encapsulate all that information into a video. Azure architecture is something that I've learned over many years and I've sort of developed as I'm going through my career. So I think it's actually a bit difficult to do that, but today I'm gonna to do my best to show you guys what the good practices of Azure architecture is, how to build something that is corporate ready or enterprise ready, something that's secure and that meets the sort of typical frameworks that you would build on-prem. I'm gonna show you how we can do it in Microsoft Azure. As usual, if you are liking the content, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I've noticed a lot of you are watching the videos but not subscribing. I please ask you to subscribe because it really motivates me to make more. So I'm going to preface this video by telling you guys that I am not a network engineer. I have never worked as a network engineer. I've always been in the Wintel space, in the infrastructure space, in the Microsoft Azure space, but I've never really worked in typical network infrastructure. So I just wanna make that clear because I may make mistakes in this and I'm happy for you guys to point them out. It's just to let you know that I'm not a network expert and I really just wanna show you how to do things in Azure. So the question is tricky. How can I actually show you guys how we sort of set up a typical Azure architecture when it comes to network and topology? Well, I can show you guys diagrams and I can show you guys different types of reference architecture that I've seen, or what I thought was we could actually build my home lab and extend it into Azure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a few paths to this series. So in this part, what we're going to do is I'm going to build the design. And to build the design, we need to capture my requirements. So let's treat it like we're treating a real project. So what we're first going to try and do is capture all of my requirements for my home lab and for all the Azure space. We're going to try and get them all into some type of document. And then I'm going to actually sit there and draw it out. I'm gonna draw a topology and a high level design of how it's going to look for my home lab connecting into Azure. And we're gonna design the Azure side of it as if we were designing it for a customer. The importance of doing the home lab stretching into Microsoft Azure is to show you guys how we can achieve connectivity, how we can manipulate things like data flow and how the traffic flows. And maybe we'll do things like push the traffic from Azure on-prem so we can use the internet at my house, for example. The goals of this video are to do the following. We are going to show you how we can manipulate data flow, so how we can use NSGs and route tables to actually manipulate traffic and change the way it moves and change the default gateways and whatnot so we can route the traffic however we want. I'm gonna show you how we can block traffic with things like NSGs and maybe we'll implement some firewalls eventually. I'm gonna show you how we segregate data, so how we have a DMZ network and a production network and how we have a hub and spoke topology in the network. I'm gonna to show you how we can protect compute and storage. And I'm gonna show you how we can achieve connectivity and we'll use a site to site VPN for that. So without further ado, let's go through my requirements. So my number one requirement is that we can extend into Azure however we like. So for example, I have a Raspberry Pi cluster and that Raspberry Pi cluster has limited resources. Now, if I'm in a bind and I need to quickly spin up some type of virtual machine and I don't have enough resources on any of my environment here, I want to be able to spin up a resource in Azure, but I want to be able to connect to it using private networks so over VPN. That's one of my first requirements. It is to actually be able to extend into Azure and to scale into Azure however I feel like. My next requirement is to actually have a segregated network. So I want to have a production network and a DMZ network, and I want it to actually live in a separate space so that I can have a different set of rules for it. I don't actually have anything that I am serving to the internet or that anything that can be accessed on the internet, but let's just do it for research purposes. My third thing is, is that I don't want to be connecting to virtual machines over a insecure means. So I don't want to be using RDP, even if it's over VPN, I don't want to be using RDP, and I don't want to be using any sort of public IPs in the Azure space, so no public IPs. My last requirement is that I want to set it up in an enterprise type topology. So this will help you guys the most, I think, when you're looking at it in a customer's environment or something like that. I'm going to set it up in a way where it's a hub and spoke environment. So we're going to have a hub virtual network 
and we're going to have spoke virtual networks that will actually be our production and our DMZ and whatnot. So that will allow us to have a more traditional hub and spoke environment where we can actually control the data flow a lot easier and a lot better and we can actually inspect traffic if we want to. Typically, we would probably push all the traffic to a firewall which lives in that hub, but we're not gonna do that today because the firewall is a bit more advanced. So let's not bang on about it too much. Let's just get straight into building our high-level design. After the high-level design, typically we will go to the customer, show them the high-level design, and they will decide if they want to go ahead with it, and then we'll do something called a detailed design, which is a lot more in-depth. We'll probably go into that in a few different videos because it will take a lot of time. But for now, let's just do the high-level design and we'll just capture the topology for now. And that's what we'll build today. And in the next video, we'll actually build this environment in Azure and I'll show you how we can connect from the switch into Azure. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to draw it out. So we're gonna draw out our on-premises environment. And the first thing we're gonna do is chuck this here. Just kidding, not that. So this is going to be our environment that is essentially my home lab. And in that home lab, we have a Ubiquiti Dream Machine Pro. And that is our home lab. Essentially, there is a few other things. There is a Raspberry Pi cluster, which I actually run a VMware environment on. And there's also a router, which gives us access to the internet. I'm not gonna get too into detail with the on-premises or the home lab type stuff. We wanna show you more the Azure stuff. So let's build the Azure environment now. I'm gonna draw an Azure Square. So this is our Azure environment up here and we are going to have a hub VNet. And inside that hub VNet, we'll have a couple of subnets. And in those subnets, we're going to have things like a bastion host. And one subnet is going to be dedicated to our gateway subnet. So that's where the VPN will terminate. There's also going to be a virtual network gateway that lives in this VNet. And that is going to connect to our local network gateway, which is a logical presentation of our on-premises environment in Azure. So we're gonna connect those two and that's going to form our VPN tunnel. That's all going to land into our hub VNet. And we're also going to have a production VNet. And in that production VNet, we're gonna have a few different subnets. And those subnets will have things like shared services and applications. So typically in a customer environment, we would have our domain controller maybe in the shared services, maybe like an SCCM server. And then in the application subnet, they might have some applications they use for you know, line of business applications that they need to connect to. We'll have a VNet peering between the two virtual networks and that'll allow them to talk to each other because remember that VNet over there is actually our hub VNet. So all the traffic must come through there first. And generally in an enterprise environment, we'll have a firewall in there, but we are going to try and direct our traffic down on-prem so we can inspect it because we don't have a firewall up in Azure. That's for a later video. Then we have nice and easy things like route table. Then we have a few other bits and pieces that allow us to do what we want to do. So it allows us to manipulate data flow. So for example, we have route tables and in those route tables, we might have some user defined routes to make sure that all the traffic in the production VNet or something that's in the shared services VNet always has a default gateway which lands in the hub VNet which might be a firewall or might actually push it back down on-prem so that the packets can be expected. We also have NSGs. NSGs are basically allow and deny rules for certain ports, certain IPs and in both directions. So we can use those for a bit of security as well. They are not a replacement for firewalls, but they're great to sort of keep an environment nice and secure when you're talking about certain subnets or VNets. So as I mentioned before, at this point, we have our high level design. We would usually take it to the customer and get some sort of sign off that this is the environment they want. They'll probably have a few questions. They might try and move things around or they might ask us to do things in a certain way. But essentially this is what we'll take back and we'll turn into our detailed design, which will flesh out the environment a lot more and pretty much give reasons why we have decided to do things in a certain way. So we'll give some options in the detailed design and we will explain why we made the design decision that we did. I hope that's helpful. I hope that next time you are looking into your customer's environment and you're looking to build an environment, you sort of understand how we do it in a best practice type of way or good practice type of way. In the next series, we'll actually build this lab and we'll stretch my lab into Microsoft Azure and I'll show you how we can do some pretty cool stuff. So stay tuned for more.